Welcome to Quaver TV, you're tuned into Interesting People, where we explore the lives, stories and impact of some of the most influential figures in history. I'm your host and today, we're diving into the world of imagination and magic with none other than Walt Disney. From his humble beginnings to building one of the most iconic entertainment empires, we'll explore the man, the legend, and the creations that continue to inspire generations. So sit back, relax and get ready for an insightful journey through the life and legacy of a true visionary. Walt Disney, just hearing his name brings to mind a world filled with magic, dreams, and timeless memories. Animation isn't just an art form, it's pure magic, especially when first experienced through something as simple as a flipbook. The first time encountering one was unforgettable. A flipbook is a series of images where each page differs slightly, and when quickly flipped, those drawings come to life. Discovering that this basic principle was the foundation for creating cartoons was mesmerizing and ignited a fascination with Walt Disney himself. The magic of Disney isn't just in the characters or theme parks, it's in the vision and determination of Walt Disney as a person. Walt Disney didn't start as a giant in the entertainment industry. Born in 1901, he faced numerous challenges and failures before finding success. One of his first ventures, laugh o Graham Studio, went bankrupt. Despite the setback, Disney remained undeterred, and his persistence led to the creation of iconic works like Steamboat Willie and, later, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the world's first full-length animated feature. Snow White was a risky venture. At the time it was mocked as Disney's folly, with critics doubting that anyone would sit through a full-length animated movie. However, in 1937, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was released and became a massive success proving skeptics wrong, and solidifying Disney's place as a visionary in filmmaking. But Disney's magic wasn't limited to the silver screen. Every Sunday night, the wonderful world of Disney would air, a tradition that became a highlight. The show featured everything from cartoons to documentaries, offering a perfect blend of entertainment and imagination that left a lasting impression. Disney Channel was another must-have. While many kids were craving premium channels like Cinemax or HBO, the one that mattered was the Disney Channel. The obsession even led to desperate attempts to tune in, by adding metal to the TV antenna, trying to catch a glimpse of the channel's magic. It's those small, determined moments that reflect just how much Disney meant. Beyond TV, Disney also had a major impact in print. Comic books, especially the DuckTales series, were a cherished part of childhood. Scrooge McDuck, Huey, Dewey, and Louie took readers on adventures that were thrilling and imaginative. The joy of receiving those issues in the mail and diving into those worlds remains a fond memory. And there's something fascinating about the little-known details and tidbits from Disney's history. For example, there's a popular Mandela Effect theory that claims Tinkerbell never dotted the I in the Disney logo, yet many remember it vividly. These kinds of details keep the mystique of Disney alive in people's minds. Disney's legacy also expanded into live-action classics like The Absent-Minded Professor starring Frederick March, where the invention of Flubber became an iconic piece of movie magic. And who could forget The Sound of Music, an iconic movie that's ingrained in the history of Disney's influence on family entertainment. The company underwent massive changes after Walt Disney's death. Leadership was passed down, first to Roy Disney, and then to various CEOs like Michael Eisner, who took the company through some controversial yet innovative years. Disney's current ownership under Bob Iger, and its expansion into acquiring other media giants like Pixar, Marvel and Lucasfilm, shows how the brand has evolved into a global empire. Disney's Innovation wasn't just in its films and shows, but in the people who made it all possible, the Imagineers. These creative geniuses blended engineering and artistry to bring Disney's parks and movies to life. The special effects teams, makeup artists, and visual effects creators were instrumental in shaping the magic that defined Disney's legacy from the incredible Mr. Limpet to the Mickey, Donald, and Goofy movies. Disney's filmography is vast and varied, showing just how versatile and timeless the content remains. There's something undeniably comforting about the consistency and warmth of Disney's productions over the years, whether through movies, shows, or Sunday evenings with the wonderful world of Disney. The storytelling, the characters, and the creativity are what make Disney an enduring part of pop culture. It's this world of endless imagination that turned dreams into reality, creating experiences that remain unforgettable for generations. Walt Disney's journey from a small town boy to the creator of one of the most iconic entertainment empires is filled with determination, vision, and innovation. He was more than just a filmmaker, he was a storyteller, a pioneer, and someone who believed in the power of dreams. The roots of his creativity can be traced back to his childhood. From a young age, Walt was captivated by drawing and cartoons, eventually finding work as a commercial illustrator. The magic that Disney brought to life through animation was fueled by a deep understanding of what captures the human spirit. The fascination with animation began for many through something as simple as a flipbook. Watching a series of images come to life by flipping through the pages sparked a sense of wonder 
revealing the magic behind the moving pictures. It's easy to see how this fascination could evolve into a lifelong passion for storytelling and animation. One of the hallmarks of Disney's career was taking risks. His early ventures like Laugh-O-Gram Studio faced setbacks, but instead of being discouraged, he used those failures as stepping stones. The creation of Steamboat Willie in 1928 introduced the world to Mickey Mouse and marked the start of Disney's rise in the industry. The character became an instant hit and has remained a global symbol of joy and imagination ever since. In 1937, Disney pushed the boundaries further by producing the first ever full-length animated feature, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. At the time many thought it was a foolish endeavor. Critics called it Disney's folly, doubting that audiences would sit through a feature-length cartoon. Yet, against all odds, Snow White was a resounding success, becoming a cultural milestone and setting the stage for the future of animated films. Walt Disney wasn't just focused on the big screen. He also had a keen interest in television, which led to the creation of the wonderful world of Disney. This Sunday night program became a staple for families, offering a blend of Disney classics, new adventures, and behind-the-scenes looks at Disney's creations. The show brought the magic of Disney directly into people's living rooms, creating memories that lasted a lifetime. When the Disney Channel was first introduced, it was the dream of many to have access to it. Some kids were trying to tune into premium channels like Cinemax, but my focus was solely on the Disney Channel. There's a story about how much effort went into trying to get the channel to work. Adding metal things to the TV antenna, adjusting it every which way, hoping to catch a glimpse of the channel's offerings, was a reflection of the determination and fascination that Disney inspired. The reach of Disney extended beyond just TV and movies. The DuckTales comic book subscription brought Scrooge McDuck, Huey, Dewey and Louie into homes, offering exciting tales of treasure hunts, mysteries and adventure. Those comic books were more than just entertainment, they were a window into the imaginative world that Disney cultivated. Over the years, the company evolved. After Walt Disney's passing in 1966, his brother Roy took over and saw the completion of Walt Disney World in Florida. The company's leadership continued to change hands, and in the 1980s and 1990s, under the guidance of Michael Eisner, Disney underwent a renaissance with hits like The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and The Lion King. Imagineers and special effects artists were key to bringing Disney's ambitious visions to life. These individuals combined artistic skill with technological innovation, turning dreams into reality. Whether it was the creation of animatronics for theme parks or groundbreaking visual effects in movies, their work was crucial to maintaining Disney's reputation as a leader in creativity and imagination. In addition to animation, Disney's live-action films made a significant impact. Classics like The Absent-Minded Professor, where Frederick March's character invents Flubber, captured audiences with their blend of humor, heart, and a touch of the fantastical. Movies like The Incredible Mr. Limpet also showcased Disney's unique ability to mix live-action with animation in a way that felt seamless and natural. The legacy of Disney includes not just the entertainment, but the values, dreams and magic that have touched countless lives. Every Sunday night spent watching the wonderful world of Disney, every attempt to tune into the Disney Channel, and every flip through a DuckTales comic book, is part of the rich tapestry that Disney wove into our culture. After Walt's passing, the Disney company found itself at a crossroads. Walt had been the guiding force behind the company's vision and creativity, and without him, the future seemed uncertain. His brother Roy O. Disney stepped up to ensure that Walt's final dream, Walt Disney World, was completed. When it opened in 1971, the park embodied Walt's ideals, a place where families could escape into a world of imagination and adventure. Disney's success didn't stop at theme parks. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, the company focused on continuing Walt's legacy through both animated and live-action films. Although the company saw moderate success with films like The Rescuers and Pete's Dragon, there were challenges ahead. By the mid-1980s, Disney needed new direction and leadership, and that's when Michael Eisner stepped in as CEO. His tenure marked a significant transformation. Under his leadership, Disney saw the rise of the so-called Disney Renaissance, an era that brought animated masterpieces like The Little Mermaid Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and The Lion King. These films redefined animation for a new generation and cemented Disney's place as a leader in family entertainment. Part of what made Disney stand out was its ability to combine technology with artistry, a hallmark carried on from Walt's time. Behind the scenes, special effects artists and Imagineers played a crucial role in bringing Disney's visions to life. These talented individuals blended creativity with technical know-how, whether it was in designing the groundbreaking computer-generated imagery used in films like Toy Story, or in crafting the immersive experiences found in theme parks. The work of these Imagineers and special effects artists remains one of the lesser-known yet deeply impactful aspects of Disney's legacy. Let's also not forget Disney's expansion into television. The launch of the Disney Channel in 1983 brought a new wave of programming aimed directly at kids and families. It became a staple in many households, with shows like DuckTales, The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, 
and Chip and Dale, Rescue Rangers becoming instant classics. The Disney Channel allowed a new generation to connect with the characters and stories that had defined the brand for decades. For some, the excitement of trying to catch a signal on the old TV antenna just to see the Disney Channel is a memory that perfectly captures the lengths fans would go to experience Disney magic. Disney's influence wasn't limited to just TV and movies. Comic books were another key avenue through which the stories and characters reached fans. DuckTales comic books brought more tales of Scrooge McDuck and his adventures, creating a deeper world for readers to explore. The legacy of Disney comics, from Carl Barks's work on Donald Duck to the many spin-offs that followed, has its own special place in the Disney lore. Discussion of Disney wouldn't be complete without touching on the live-action films that helped shape family entertainment. Films like The Absent-Minded Professor starring Frederick March, where the invention of Flubber became a pop culture icon, showcased Disney's knack for blending comedy, imagination, and a touch of the extraordinary. These movies, much like the animated classics, left a lasting impression on audiences and became staples of Sunday night TV viewing. For many, the wonderful world of Disney was the cornerstone of family entertainment. Airing every Sunday evening, the show brought families together to experience the magic of Disney, whether it was a classic film, a documentary about the making of a movie, or a look at one of Disney's parks. The program was a weekly tradition that connected people of all ages. This was also where many first heard about Disney's latest projects, or learned about Walt's vision for the future. Walt Disney, the man, was a dreamer, a storyteller, and a relentless optimist who believed in the power of imagination. He saw animation as more than just drawings on a screen, he saw it as a way to bring stories to life and to make the impossible seem real. His personal philosophy and creative drive are what shaped the Disney company into what it is today, a global powerhouse that continues to inspire millions. As the years went by, the company expanded further. Today, Disney is a multifaceted media giant with interests spanning across film, television, theme parks and beyond. Though Walt's original vision was centered on animation, the company he founded now owns properties ranging from Star Wars to Marvel. Yet the heart of Disney's identity remains rooted in the belief that imagination and creativity can change the world. Even with the expansion into various ventures, at its core, Disney remains dedicated to storytelling. From the early days of hand-drawn animation to the state-of-the-art computer graphics of today, the company has continually evolved while staying true to the spirit of creativity and innovation. That spirit is perhaps most evident in the Imagineers, the brilliant minds behind the attractions and experiences that have made Disney parks renowned worldwide. The Imagineers were the people who took Walt's ideas and made them reality, whether it was the groundbreaking animatronics used in rides like Pirates of the Caribbean, or the fully immersive lands like Galaxy's Edge. Their work extends beyond just building rides. They craft entire worlds, each with its own story, filled with the small details that make the Disney experience feel truly magical. Imagineers include people with talents in engineering, architecture, design, and even storytelling, working together to push the limits of what can be achieved in a theme park environment. Among these Imagineers, certain individuals stand out, like Mark Davis, one of the original Nine Old Men, who not only animated characters like Cruella de Vil and Tinkerbell, but also played a significant role in designing attractions such as the Haunted Mansion, and It's a Small World. Another notable figure is Joe Rode, whose vision led to the creation of Disney's Animal Kingdom, a park that blurs the line between theme park and natural reserve. While movies and theme parks are perhaps the most visible parts of Disney, there's a wealth of content that often flies under the radar. For instance, the Mickey, Donald and Goofy cartoons from the 1930s and 40s still hold up as prime examples of character-driven animation. These shorts often featured slapstick comedy, combined with clever gags, many of which still resonate with audiences today. The Three Musketeers film adaptation was another fan favorite that showcased how Disney could take classic stories and reimagine them in a fun and accessible way. Speaking of beloved classics, The Sound of Music and The Incredible Mr. Limpet are two films that, while not originally Disney productions, fit perfectly within the Disney ethos of wholesome family entertainment. The Sound of Music became iconic for its uplifting story and memorable music, while The Incredible Mr. Limpet, starring Don Knotts, was a unique blend of live action and animation that reflected the era's experimental approach to filmmaking. Over the years, Disney's ability to stay relevant while still honoring its roots is something truly remarkable. That's why a discussion about Disney wouldn't be complete without mentioning some of the lesser-known facts and tidbits that only true enthusiasts might know. For example, Many people still debate whether Tinkerbell ever dotted the I in the Disney logo. It's a so-called Mandela effect that continues to stir discussions online, with some firmly believing that she did while others argue against it. Another fun fact is that the original Disneyland in California has a private apartment above the firehouse on Main Street, USA, where Walt would stay while overseeing the park's construction. Today, a lamp in the window remains lit in his memory, a small yet meaningful tribute to the man who dreamed it all up. As the company expanded in the decades following Walt's death, leadership shifted, 
and new visions were brought to the table. The Disney family eventually had less direct control over the company's operations, especially as it became a public corporation. Today the Walt Disney Company is led by a board of directors, and continues to evolve as a global entertainment giant, with properties like ESPN, Pixar, and 20th Century Fox under its umbrella. What started as a dream in a small studio, has now become a worldwide empire that touches nearly every corner of entertainment. From the beloved DuckTales cartoons to the blockbuster films of today, the company's impact on popular culture is undeniable. It's this combination of imagination, innovation, and a relentless drive to entertain, that has made Disney a household name for many generations. After Walt's passing, the company faced uncertain times. Without his visionary leadership, many worried that Disney's creative output would suffer. The late 1960s and 70s were marked by a series of financial and creative struggles. However the company managed to produce hits like The Love Bug, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, and The Rescuers. Still the magic wasn't quite the same, and many felt that the studio had lost its way. It was during this time that the wonderful world of Disney became a staple in American households. Every Sunday night, millions of families, including mine, gathered around their televisions to watch classic Disney films, animated shorts, or original content, made specifically for TV. This tradition became a treasured part of growing up in many homes. For me it was a special time with my dad, bonding over the stories that Disney so expertly delivered. Even, during this rocky period, Disney never stopped innovating. In 1983, they launched the Disney Channel, a premium cable service that, at the time, was unlike anything else on television. I remember desperately wanting to watch the Disney Channel when it first came out. But back then, we didn't have cable, and I went to extreme lengths trying to catch a glimpse of it. I was so determined that I even tried adding things to the TV antenna, hoping it would help pull in the signal. Needless to say, it didn't work, and I ended up breaking the antenna off in the process. While other kids were sneaking peeks at Cinemax, all I wanted was to see what this new Disney Channel was all about. My fascination with animation didn't stop at television. Early on I was mesmerized by the simple flipbooks that gave life to still drawings. Flipbooks are small booklets, where each page features a drawing that, when flipped rapidly, creates the illusion of movement. The first time I saw one in action, I was captivated. I couldn't believe that something so simple could create such magic. Learning that this was how cartoons were made only deepened my admiration for Walt Disney and the animators who brought these characters to life. I knew then that animation was something truly special, a blend of art, science and imagination, all working together to create something extraordinary. As time went on, Disney began to regain its footing. The 1980s and 90s, known as the Disney Renaissance, were a turning point. With new leadership under Michael Eisner and Frank Wells, the company embarked on one of its most successful periods, producing timeless classics like The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and The Lion King. These films not only revived Disney's reputation, but also introduced a whole new generation to the magic of animated storytelling. But my love for Disney wasn't just about the films. It was about the entire world that Disney had created. One filled with imagination, innovation, and a commitment to quality. Whether it was through comic books, television shows or theme parks, Disney always found a way to capture my attention and keep me coming back for more. Disney wasn't just about films and TV shows. It was about the immersive experiences that spanned across mediums. I grew up with Disney comic books, especially the DuckTales series. For me, the old DuckTales cartoon and comic were nothing short of iconic. The adventures of Scrooge McDuck and his grandnephews Huey, Dewey and Louie brought a sense of adventure, humor, and charm that I couldn't get enough of. The series wasn't just entertainment, it was part of what made my childhood special. I would spend hours reading those comics, diving into the world of Duckburg and following their wild treasure hunts, clever schemes, and encounters with unforgettable villains like Magicka Dispel and Flintheart Glomgold. Speaking of DuckTales, a Generation X thing in particular, my generation, there's a Mandela effect that I feel connected to. Many people today say that Tinkerbell never dotted the I in Disney with her wand in those classic intros. But I'm from the universe where she absolutely did. I distinctly remember her flying across the screen, tapping the I and leaving a trail of pixie dust. Whether it's a trick of memory or a shift in reality, I'm not alone in this belief, and it's become one of those fascinating points of nostalgia for many Disney fans. Disney's animation wasn't just limited to fun and adventure, it also included heartwarming tales and live-action animated hybrids. The Absent-Minded Professor, starring Frederick March, was one such film that I found captivating. The film introduced us to Flubber, that whimsical substance with a life of its own. The movie's inventive spirit and slapstick comedy made it a standout during its time and has remained a nostalgic classic ever since. But Disney's innovation didn't stop with animation. The studio also pushed boundaries in special effects and in practical effects. Films like The Incredible Mr. Limpet, 
a Warner Bros. production featuring Don Knotts but with that distinct Disney-style charm blended live action and animation in ways that were groundbreaking for their time. These movies were not just technically impressive, they were magical, bridging the gap between fantasy and reality. Another cornerstone of my Disney experience was The Three Mouseketeers. Not the old swashbuckling tale but the animated version with Mickey, Donald and Goofy in the lead roles. This version took the classic characters I already loved, and threw them into an epic adventure, filled with laughs, action, and that timeless Disney charm. For me, it was the perfect blend of humor and adventure, bringing these beloved characters into a new context while staying true to their personalities. Of course, I can't talk about Disney without mentioning The Sound of Music. While not a Disney production, a Disney property, its integration into the broader cultural sphere, alongside Disney's own musicals, made it a film I often associate with that era. The grandeur of the film, combined with its unforgettable music, felt like it belonged right alongside Disney's classics. The same can be said for countless other live-action Disney films, that carried that signature blend of heart and creativity, like Mary Poppins and Bedknobs and Broomsticks. Walt Disney wasn't just an entertainment mogul, he was a visionary. As a kid, I was fascinated with the concept of animation. I remember when I, myself first discovered flipbooks, it was like magic. That's when I realized how cartoons worked. Animation was nothing short of mesmerizing to me, it was the closest thing to real-life magic. And learning that Walt Disney, the man who seemed to create entire worlds from thin air, was behind so much of it, inspired me deeply. I knew right then that I wanted to be an animator, but alas I couldn't draw. Even so, Disney remains very powerful to me. Every book I read, and every book report, was a biography of Walt Disney. Walt, himself was a complex and fascinating person. Most people know him as the creator of Mickey Mouse and Disneyland, but there's so much more to his story. He wasn't just a talented animator, he was a relentless perfectionist, a dreamer who refused to take no for an answer. In the early days, he faced numerous setbacks. From the loss of his first successful character, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, to the near bankruptcy of his studio, he always found a way to bounce back. That kind of determination was inspiring to me. After Walt's death in 1966, the Disney company faced a major turning point. Without its charismatic leader, it was hard for the company to maintain the same creative spark. But Disney was bigger than just one man. It was a culture, a legacy that would carry on through the work of others. Over the years the Disney company changed hands and saw new leadership, but each generation tried to uphold Walt's original vision while expanding the juggernaut's reach. Disney owes much of its success to the Imagineers, those brilliant minds who combined artistry with engineering to create experiences unlike anything else. Names like Mark Davis, one of Disney's nine old men, and Bob Gurr, who designed many of the Disneyland rides come to mind. These were the behind-the-scenes geniuses who turned Walt's dreams into reality, from building animatronic attractions like the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, to designing groundbreaking effects for films. These were the people who truly embodied the spirit of innovation that Disney is known for. Then there were the special effects and makeup artists who brought Disney's live-action films to life. Whether it was the talking animals in The Shaggy Dog, or the transformative scenes in Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, these artists pushed the limits of what was possible in film at the time. Disney's combination of animation and live action was groundbreaking, setting the stage for more modern blends of these mediums that we see today. Every Sunday night, I would gather around the TV with my dad to watch The Wonderful World of Disney on ABC. It was a ritual in our house, and it's one of my fondest memories. This weekly show was a gateway into the wider world of Disney, offering everything from behind-the-scenes looks at the parks to re-airings of classic films. It kept Disney's magic alive and accessible, even though we couldn't go to Disneyland or afford a VCR or to buy a movie. Disney comic books were another important part of my childhood. I remember buying many to the DuckTales comic books for 75 cents, eager for every issue. I was always drawn to the stories about Scrooge McDuck and his adventures with Huey, Dewey and Louie. The older DuckTales cartoon, not the newer reboot, was my absolute favorite. It had this classic feel that just couldn't be replicated in today's shows. That series was my gateway into the broader Disney universe, with its humor, adventure, and unforgettable characters. Walt Disney was also a trailblazer when it came to awards. He won 22 Academy Awards and holds the record for the most Oscars won by an individual. But it wasn't just about winning awards, it was about pushing boundaries. Films like Snow White and The Seven Dwarfs, the first full-length animated feature, were groundbreaking. Disney wasn't just making cartoons, he was changing the way people thought about storytelling. Over the years, the Disney company continued to grow, acquiring new properties and expanding its influence. The company's acquisition of Pixar, in 2006, and later Marvel and Lucasfilm, changed the entertainment landscape. But even as Disney grew into a global empire, it never lost sight of the principles that Walt held dear, creativity, storytelling, and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Disney has always been about magic, 
From the early flip books that sparked my interest to the groundbreaking films that shaped generations, Walt Disney created a world where anything seemed possible. The story of Walt Disney and his company is a testament to how imagination, determination, and innovation has changed the world. The magic of Disney wasn't just limited to the big screen. Growing up, I watched the wonderful world of Disney every Sunday night on ABC with my dad. It was written in our household, a time when we could all gather around and get lost in the storytelling, whether it was a classic animated film or a live-action adventure. That show was a gateway into the world of Disney for so many families, keeping the magic alive even when we weren't at the movies. Then there's the Disney Channel. While other kids were trying to tune into channels like Cinemax, I was focused on the Disney Channel. To me, that channel represented everything I wanted, animated classics, new shows, and the promise of endless creativity. Walt Disney himself was a fascinating figure. He wasn't just a man who built a company, he was a visionary. He took risks when others wouldn't. He bet everything on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, despite industry experts calling it Disney's folly, convinced that no one would sit through a full-length animated movie. But Walt believed in it, and it became a massive success, paving the way for what we now know as feature-length animation. Walt's personality was a mix of charm, determination, and stubbornness. He wasn't always easy to work with, he demanded perfection from himself and those around him. But that's what led to the creation of timeless stories. When you think about the Imagineers who brought Disneyland to life, it's clear they were a reflection of Walt's vision. They were problem solvers, dreamers, and artists all rolled into one. The way they brought Walt's ideas into reality, from the creation of animatronics to immersive environments, set a standard for theme parks worldwide. After Walt passed away in 1966, the company faced challenges. Leadership was passed to Roy O. Disney, Walt's brother, who saw the completion of Walt Disney World in 1971, fulfilling one of Walt's final dreams. But over time, the company experienced ups and downs, facing financial struggles and creative droughts during the late 70s and early 80s. It wasn't until Michael Eisner took the reins in 1984 that the company found new life, launching the Disney Renaissance, with films like The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and Aladdin. The impact of Disney's animation studio can't be overstated, but the behind-the-scenes talent, people like Glenn Keane, Frank Thomas, Ollie Johnston, and other legendary animators, played a crucial role in that success. These artists were the backbone of Disney's creative output. Their dedication to their craft and their passion for storytelling elevated the films they worked on into the iconic classics we know today. As much as the movies are a big part of Disney's legacy, there's also a rich history in television. The Disney afternoon block was a staple of my childhood, with shows like DuckTales leading the charge. DuckTales was more than just a cartoon to me, it was a gateway into the larger Disney universe. The adventures of Scrooge McDuck and his nephews, combined with a catchy theme song that's still iconic today, made it something I looked forward to every day after school. I also bought the DuckTales comic book, fully immersing myself in their world, anytime I could get the money. Speaking of comics, Disney had a strong presence in that space too. Characters like Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse and Goofy, weren't just stars on screen, they had entire lives in the pages of comic books, that told stories far beyond what was shown in the movies. These comics had their own unique humor and charm, capturing the personalities of these characters in a way that felt fresh, yet familiar. Walt's impact goes even deeper when you start exp exploring the Imagineers and special effects artists who brought his visions to life. Walt surrounded himself with some of the most talented individuals in the world. People who were not just skilled but innovative in ways that pushed the boundaries of what was possible. The invention of audio animatronics revolutionized theme parks and allowed characters like the pirates in Pirates of the Caribbean or the singing animals in the Enchanted Tiki Room to come to life. These innovations weren't limited to the theme parks though. The effects work in live-action films like The Absent-Minded Professor and Herbie the Love Bug No Hit Back Sissy Laugh Out Loud, two of my favorites, showcase just how versatile Disney could be. The incredible Mr. Limpet in particular blended live-action and animation in a way that was groundbreaking for its time. The story of a man who transforms into a fish during World War II was as quirky as it was creative, capturing the spirit of imagination that Disney represented. Walt's drive to push the limits of storytelling is also evident in how he approached television. The wonderful world of Disney wasn't just a show, it was a masterclass in branding, storytelling and world building. Walt knew that by giving families a reason to tune in every week, he was strengthening the bond they had with Disney. This strategy of consistently delivering high-quality content across different mediums is something that still influences the entertainment industry today. Walt Disney himself was more than just a businessman or a showman, he was an idealist and a visionary. But his life wasn't all smooth sailing. Many people don't realize that Walt faced constant challenges, from financial setbacks to the difficulties of keeping his creative team motivated and inspired. Still, he was driven by a love for storytelling, 
and a passion for creating experiences that went beyond mere entertainment. His personal life had its struggles too. For example, despite being the face of family entertainment, Walt was known to be a heavy smoker and dealt with stress in ways that were at times contradictory to the wholesome image of the company he built. After Walt's death in 1966, many wondered if Disney would survive without his leadership. The company did go through a rough patch, struggling to capture the same magic and innovation that had defined its earlier years. But Disney's legacy was too strong to fade away. Over time, Disney evolved, adapting to changes in the entertainment industry while still keeping some of that old magic alive. The 1980s saw a resurgence with movies like The Little Mermaid, which sparked what's known as the Disney Renaissance, a period where the company returned to its roots with high-quality animated features. Disney's acquisitions over the years have also changed the landscape of entertainment. Buying Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilm, and more recently, 20th Century Fox allowed Disney to expand its reach into different genres and fan bases. What started as a studio producing short cartoons is now an empire that spans film, television, streaming services, theme parks, and even Broadway. It's fascinating to see how a single man's dream has grown into something that touches every corner of global entertainment. Behind this growth were individuals who carried forward Walt's vision, including some of the most creative minds in the industry. The Imagineers, Disney's team of engineers and artists, were responsible for much of the magic you see in the parks today. People like Mark Davis, one of Disney's original nine old men, played a huge role in character design, not just in animation but in the attractions too. Special effects legends like Blaine Gibson, who sculpted many of the figures in the parks, were instrumental in turning those imaginative concepts into reality. This love for creativity extended into every aspect of Disney, whether it was the artistry in the animated films, or the craftsmanship behind the special effects in live-action movies. There was always a focus on pushing boundaries. Even today, that spirit lives on in the company's pursuit of technological advancements and storytelling innovation. One of the lesser-known facts is that in his early days, Walt struggled to find steady work. His first studio Laugh-O-Gram went bankrupt, yet he didn't let this failure define him. Instead, he saw it as an opportunity to learn and build something better. One story that stands out involves the creation of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Many industry experts at the time dubbed it Disney's Folly, predicting that a feature-length animated film would fail to hold audiences' attention. But Walt believed in it so much that he mortgaged his house to fund the project. When it was finally released in 1937, Snow White became a colossal success, proving that animation could be a powerful medium for storytelling. Walt was a pioneer in so many aspects of entertainment, from creating the first synchronized sound cartoon with Steamboat Willie, to developing innovative theme park attractions. What set him apart wasn't just his talent but his ability to envision a world where animation, live action, and physical experiences could coexist in perfect harmony. It was this vision that eventually led to the opening of Disneyland in 1955, a place where stories came to life in a tangible way. But, beyond the corporate success, Walt Disney was a man with a deep love for storytelling and creating joy for others. He had a personal philosophy of pushing boundaries and exploring new ideas. His commitment to bringing innovation to every project led to the creation of characters and worlds that remain timeless to this day. When Walt Disney passed away in 1966, the company faced a significant turning point. Leadership shifted first to Roy O. Disney, Walt's brother, who saw the completion of Walt Disney World as a tribute to his brother's dream. But, after Roy's passing in 1971, the company found itself in a bit of a creative rut, they call it Disney's Dark Ages, the company struggled through the 1970s and early 80s, with leadership changing hands and a lack of direction in the company's animation and film divisions. Then came the revitalization period in the late 1980s, with Mike Eisner and Frank Wells taking the reins. The Disney Renaissance saw the release of films like The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin and The Lion King, which brought Disney back to the forefront of animation. During this era the company also began expanding its television presence with the Disney Channel and syndication of shows like DuckTales and Chip and Dale, Rescue Rangers. Over the years Disney has continued to evolve, acquiring major companies like Pixar, Marvel, ABC, Hulu and Lucasfilm, making it the media giant it is today. As of now Disney is led by Bob Iger, who had returned to CEO after briefly stepping down. Under Iger's leadership, the company is focused heavily on its streaming service, Disney+, Plus, which offers access to decades of content from classic animated films to the latest Marvel series. It's worth taking a moment to talk about some of the legendary Imagineers and artists who played vital roles in shaping Disney's legacy. Names like Mark Davis, one of Disney's nine old men, who helped bring iconic characters like Tinkerbell and Cruella de Vil to life, and Mary Blair, whose distinct color palettes and style influenced Alice in Wonderland and Peter Pan. Then there's Blaine Gibson, the sculptor behind many of the animatronics at Disneyland and Disney World, including the famous partner statue featuring Walt and Mickey. Fa, special effects, and makeup departments also deserve recognition. 
Artists like Rick Baker, who worked on Captain EO, and John Hench, who designed Disney Park attractions, brought a level of realism and detail that made Disney's stories all the more immersive. When it was finally released in 1937, Snow White became a colossal success, proving that animation could be a powerful medium for storytelling. Walt was a pioneer in so many aspects of entertainment, from Cinderella to developing innovative theme park attractions. What set him apart wasn't just his talent but his ability to envision a world where animation, live action, and physical experiences could coexist in perfect harmony. It was this vision that eventually led to the opening of Disneyland in 1955, a place where stories came to life in a tangible way. Thought of by Walter sitting on a park bench in another amusement park, and watching his daughters. But beyond the corporate success, Walt Disney was a man with a deep love for storytelling, and creating joy for others. He had a personal philosophy of pushing boundaries and exploring new ideas. His commitment to bringing innovation to every project, led to the creation of characters and worlds that remain timeless to this day. One lesser known fact about Walt is that he often used pseudonyms when working on certain projects like, Retlaw Yensid, his name spelled backward when signing contracts or developing new ideas. As we delve deeper into Disney's legacy, it's essential to mention some of the animated films and TV shows that defined a generation. The Mickey, Donald Goofy shorts were among my favorites growing up. These characters, especially when they appeared together in stories like The Three Mouseketeers, showed just how versatile and entertaining Disney animation could be. Similar to what Disney did with Mary Poppins, speaking of live action and animation, and bed knobs and broomsticks. Over the years, the Disney brand has evolved far beyond what Walt himself could have ever imagined. After Walt Disney's death in 1966, the company faced several challenges and leadership changes. Initially, Roy O. Disney, Walt's brother, took charge and saw through the completion of Walt's final projects, including Disney World in Florida. After that, Disney also made significant strides in theme park innovation, expanding internationally with parks in Tokyo and Paris, and opening new attractions that pushed the boundaries of what theme parks could offer. Behind the scenes, Imagineers, the creative geniuses responsible for designing Disney attractions, were at the forefront of these innovations. People like Tony Baxter, who developed rides like Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, and Joe Rode, the lead designer for Disney's Animal Kingdom, were instrumental in pushing the limits of what themed entertainment could achieve. Their ability to blend storytelling, technology, and artistic design is a direct continuation of the legacy Walt Disney left behind. Special effects artists also played a crucial role, especially as technology advanced. From the practical effects used in early Disney films to the cutting-edge CGI seen in movies like Tron till today, Disney has always been at the forefront of visual effects. The development of CAP's computer animation production system, in collaboration with Pixar, revolutionized how animation was done, leading to smoother, more dynamic animations, and giving birth to the first fully computer-animated feature, Toy Story. As the years went on, Disney's acquisitions further solidified its status as a media giant. The purchases of Pixar in 2006, Marvel in 2009, Lucasfilm in 2012, and 21st Century Fox in 2019, expanded Disney's portfolio into superhero films, Star Wars and more. Each acquisition was a strategic move that broadened the company's reach, while adding layers of storytelling that resonated with new audiences. Today Disney is more than just a studio, it's an empire with properties spanning films, TV, theme parks and streaming platforms like Disney+. Yet with all this growth, some things remain timeless. It's moments like these that cemented Disney's place in family traditions. Something that continues even today. Though now, it might be through streaming, rather than broadcast TV while. The Disney brand has grown into a global phenomenon. At its core, it remains rooted in the art of storytelling, and the belief that imagination can lead to extraordinary things. Even after Walt's passing, his influence is still felt in every animated feature, every theme park ride, and every innovation that the company brings forth. The essence of Disney, whether in a movie, a comic book, or a theme park experience, has always been about transporting people to a world of wonder, and making them believe in magic, even if just for a little while. While Disney has expanded into so many areas, including live-action films, theme parks, and even streaming, it's important to remember the charm of Disney's classic animation. Animation, after all, is what first captivated me. When I saw my first flipbook as a child, I was mesmerized by how simple drawings could come to life with just a flip of the pages. That's when I knew animation was pure magic, and it sparked my fascination with Walt Disney himself. This was the very foundation of animation, and seeing it in action was enough to set me on the path of exploring how cartoons were made. When I discovered that the same basic principle was behind every cartoon I watched, I became even more interested in Walt Disney, the man who revolutionized animation. It's hard to talk about Walt Disney without diving into the magic of his early creations, especially in animation. He wasn't just focused on producing cartoons, he aimed to create experiences that would stay with people for a lifetime. One of the most famous examples of this is Fantasia, 
a groundbreaking film that blended classical music with animated sequences in ways that had never been done before. It was ahead of its time in both concept and execution, and was designed to immerse audiences in a sensory experience. Fantasia was also one of the first films to use stereophonic sound, which created a multi-dimensional audio experience, making it a true masterpiece of its era. As I grew up so did Disney, the company evolved, and my interest expanded beyond just the cartoons. I started getting into the deeper layers of what made Disney special, the Imagineers who designed the parks, the special effects artists who brought magic to life, and the creative minds behind the scenes. Even with all the expansions and corporate acquisitions, there's something timeless about Disney's core, the belief in creating a sense of wonder, whether through animation, film, or theme parks. One of the highlights of Disneyland is the presence of audio animatronics, a technology that brings characters to life with both movement and sound. Walt saw the potential for combining robotics and storytelling, and he poured resources into perfecting this technology. The first major breakthrough came with the 1964 World's Fair in New York, where Disney introduced It's a Small World, Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln, and other attractions that featured audio animatronics. These attractions laid the foundation for what would become some of the most beloved experiences at Disneyland, and later, Disney World. After Walt Disney passed away in 1966, the company faced uncertainty. The visionary leader was gone, and many wondered what would happen to his projects. One of the biggest undertakings was the development of Walt Disney World in Florida. Originally envisioned as more than just a theme park, Walt had dreamed of creating an entire city known as Epcot, experimental prototype community of tomorrow, the project shifted focus after his death. It opened in 1971 as a resort and theme park, with Epcot eventually becoming a separate park, focusing on technology and international culture, rather than the futuristic city Walt had planned. Despite this expansion, there were still major creative forces, working behind the scenes, that contributed to Disney's ongoing success. Imagineers, for instance, are a blend of artists, engineers and storytellers, who create the rides and attractions that define Disney parks. These individuals are often unsung heroes, responsible for translating Walt's vision into reality. They are the ones who figure out how to make a boat ride through a jungle filled with animatronic animals feel like an adventure, or how to turn a haunted house into an iconic experience, like the Haunted Mansion. The special effects artists and makeup teams also deserve recognition. Movies like The Black Hole and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea were groundbreaking in their use of special effects, setting a high standard for cinematic innovation. Even animated films benefited from technological advances, like Tron, which was one of the first to blend live-action footage with computer-generated imagery. Disney's reach wasn't limited to movies and theme parks, it extended to comic books. It's important to mention that the original Darkwing Duck was one of the best things Disney ever created. It combined adventure, humor, and memorable characters in a way that resonated with both kids and adults. The theme song alone is unforgettable, and it's a perfect example of how Disney could create content that was both catchy and timeless. The launch of the Disney Channel in 1983 was a huge moment for me. Back then cable television was just starting to become mainstream, and having an entire channel dedicated to Disney content was a dream come true the excitement of finally getting to see shows like Mickey Mouse Club, Adventures in Wonderland, and reruns of classic Disney shorts was worth every bit of the struggle. Walter Ellis Disney, the man behind all this magic, was more than just an entertainer, he was a visionary who built an empire from his imagination. But beyond the polished image was a man with complexities, ambition, and a relentless drive. Not everyone knows that Walt was fired from one of his first jobs at a newspaper for supposedly lacking creativity, or that his first animation studio, Laugh O Graham, went bankrupt before he found success in Hollywood. It was those early failures that shaped Walt's determination. He didn't give up on his dream, and that persistence paid off with the creation of Mickey Mouse in 1928, followed by the massive success of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1937. But there's more to Walt's story than just success. He was known for being a demanding boss, often pushing his employees to their limits. He believed in constantly pushing the boundaries of what was possible, whether that was in animation, theme parks or new technologies. Some of the greatest innovations in entertainment came from that drive, but it also led to a few controversies and conflicts. Walt was a complex figure who balanced visionary ideas with a perfectionist attitude that not everyone could handle. When you think of Disney's legacy, it's impossible not to talk about the impact of their films and characters particularly in the world of animation. The Disney catalog is vast, covering everything from beloved classics like Cinderella and Peter Pan, to modern hits like Frozen and Moana. But beyond the movies, Disney's reach extended into television, and merchandising. Disney's attention to detail extended to his movies to the studio as well. Animators going to great lengths to ensure authenticity. For instance, in The Lion King 1994, the animators spent months studying real lions to capture their movements accurately. Disney's commitment to quality is what made their animation stand out, even from the very beginning. 
whether it was the painstaking hand-drawn animation of Sleeping Beauty 1959, or the cutting-edge computer animation in Toy Story 1995, Disney's films have consistently pushed the boundaries of what's possible in animation. The magic of Disney's comic book world. Characters like Mickey, Donald and Goofy have been staples in the world of comics for decades to the company now owning the MCU. The storytelling in Disney comics was just as engaging as the cartoons, with plots that ranged from treasure hunts to time-traveling escapades. These stories had a charm and wit that kept me hooked and further deepened my love for the Disney universe. The influence of Disney on my childhood can't be understated. From the Sunday night ritual of watching the wonderful world of Disney, to the hours spent reading DuckTales comics, or trying to catch a signal for the Disney Channel. These experiences shaped not just my love for animation and storytelling, but also my belief in the power of imagination. Walt Disney's legacy wasn't just about creating entertainment, it was about inspiring people to dream big, to push the boundaries of what's possible, and to believe that magic is real if you're willing to see it. While the Disney movies, comics and shows were important to me, my fascination with animation started even earlier. I vividly remember the first time I laid eyes on a flipbook. The concept was so simple, just a series of drawings on the edges of stacked pages that, when flipped quickly, created the illusion of motion. But to me, it was pure magic. The idea that you could make a picture come to life, that with each flick of a page you could create movement, was absolutely mesmerizing. It was like holding a tiny movie in your hand, one that you could control with the speed of your thumb. Learning that this was essentially how animated cartoons were made, opened up a world of possibilities for me. Suddenly I wasn't just watching TV shows, I was seeing how they were made. I became captivated by the process of animation, by the idea that every frame, every second of movement, was the result of countless hours of work by teams of artists who poured their creativity into making characters and worlds come alive. Even as as kid for Christmas I got one of those early 3D picture viewers, the Viewmaster, the reel I had was the Haunted Mansion. This early obsession is what led me to become fascinated with Walt Disney. Not just as a company, but as a person. Walt wasn't just a figurehead, he was the creative force behind the company's innovation in the world from technology to imagination. He had a vision that transcended what animation could be. I admired how Walt pushed boundaries, always looking for ways to advance the art form. The creation of Steamboat Willie in 1928, featuring Mickey Mouse, marked a huge leap forward by being one of the first cartoons to synchronize sound and animation. That's the kind of ingenuity that put Walt on the map and transformed Disney from a small studio into an industry leader. To fully appreciate Walt's impact, you have to consider the era he came from. Animation wasn't seen as a serious art form when he started out. Most people viewed cartoons as cheap entertainment good for a quick laugh but not something with depth or artistic merit. Walt changed all that. He believed animation could tell stories as meaningful and emotional as live-action films, and he was determined to prove it. The release of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1937 was the ultimate validation of his vision, and it was a massive risk for the studio. People thought Walt was crazy for investing so much time and money into something they dubbed Disney's Folly. But it paid off spectacularly with Snow White becoming a critical and commercial success that paved the way for Disney to produce more feature-length films. It's also important to highlight Disney's role in television history. While some kids my age were trying to tune into Cinemax or other networks, all I wanted was to see the Disney Channel in action. The idea that there was an entire channel dedicated to nothing but Disney content was mind-blowing to me. It was more than just cartoons, it was a glimpse into a world where everything was colorful, fun and full of adventure. Shows like The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh and movies like The Parent Trap felt like a direct connection to the magic I had always associated with Disney. When you think about Walt Disney as a person, you have to acknowledge his tenacity and vision. He was someone who refused to settle for mediocrity. He didn't just want to create something good, he wanted to create something timeless. Walt once said, We keep moving forward, opening new doors, and doing new things because we're curious. And curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. That spirit of curiosity is what fueled everything he did from pioneering synchronized sound and animation to opening Disneyland in 1955, a completely new concept in entertainment. But Walt Disney wasn't without controversy, and it's important to recognize that too. Over the years various accusations and rumors have surfaced about him, ranging from questionable business practices to alleged biases. These issues have led to a more complex and nuanced discussion about his legacy, particularly in recent times. While it's crucial not to overlook these aspects, it's equally essential to acknowledge that his contributions to entertainment, storytelling, and animation, have had a lasting impact that is hard to deny. For all the fame and fortune Walt achieved, what I respect most about him is his relentless pursuit of his dream. He wasn't afraid to fail. In fact, his early career was marked by setbacks, including losing the rights to his first successful character, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit to Universal Pictures. But instead of giving up, he bounced back by creating Mickey Mouse, 
arguably the most iconic character in animation history. This determination to keep moving forward, even when faced with failure, is what sets Walt apart as a true visionary and pioneer. Another aspect of Walt Disney that I find fascinating is how he bridged the gap between technology and storytelling. Walt was not just an animator, he was an innovator. He was always looking for new ways to enhance the animation process, whether it was by improving sound synchronization, experimenting with color, or using cutting-edge techniques like the multiplane camera. This device allowed animators to create the illusion of depth by filming multiple layers of artwork at different speeds and distances from the camera. It revolutionized the way backgrounds and foregrounds interacted, making scenes feel more immersive. You can see this innovation at work in films like Pinocchio and Bambi. But it wasn't just about the technology for Walt, it was about using that technology to serve the story. In Walt's mind, the technology was only as good as the story it helped tell. He was quoted as saying, I would rather entertain and hope that people learn something than educate people and hope they were entertained. This philosophy is evident in the classic Disney films, where stories and characters always took precedence over the technical wizardry, even though that wizardry was still very much present. Take Fantasia as an example, a film that took an unprecedented risk by merging classical music with animation in a way that had never been done before. This was not just a movie, it was an experience designed to push the boundaries of what animation could achieve. Walt even developed a new sound system called Fantasound to give audiences a richer, more dynamic audio experience. The film was a commercial flop when it was first released, but its visionary approach has since made it a classic, celebrated for how far ahead of its time it was. Walt Disney was also a master at branding and building an empire around his characters. Mickey Mouse for example wasn't just a cartoon character, he became the face of the Disney brand. From merchandise to theme parks, Walt understood the value of turning his creations into experiences that people could interact with beyond the screen. This led to the birth of Disneyland, which wasn't just an amusement park, but a carefully curated world where stories came to life. Walt's vision for Disneyland was not just to create rides, but to immerse visitors in the narratives that had become so beloved through his films. It's fascinating to think about how Walt's approach to storytelling has had a lasting impact across so many industries. His influence stretches far beyond the world of animation. He was a pioneer in marketing, a trailblazer in merging technology with creativity and a visionary in understanding the importance of creating experiences that would leave lasting impressions on audiences. The fact that Disney is still such a dominant force today is a testament to the foundation that Walt laid down many decades ago. The strategies he developed for character branding, theme park immersion, and cross-media storytelling have become standard practices in the entertainment industry. Walt Disney's life was full of little-known facts that add layers to his story. For example, did you know that Mickey Mouse was almost named Mortimer Mouse? Walt's wife Lillian convinced him that Mortimer sounded too pretentious, and suggested the name Mickey instead. Also some say she was inspired by another Mickey, Mickey Rooney, a legend in his own right. Another tidbit is that Walt was the voice of Mickey Mouse in the early years. He provided the iconic high-pitched voice that became synonymous with the character, contributing to Mickey's immense popularity. Even Walt's journey to creating Disneyland was filled with small yet interesting stories. The idea for the park came about when Walt was taking his daughters to local amusement parks. He noticed that most parks were dirty, chaotic, and didn't offer much for both children and adults to enjoy together. He envisioned a place where families could experience joy together in a clean, organized environment. This vision eventually became Disneyland, which opened in 1955 and became the blueprint for theme parks around the world. But what often gets overlooked in discussions about Walt Disney is how much of a gambler he really was. Almost every major project he took on was a significant risk. Whether it was Snow White, investing in the latest technology for Fantasia, or pouring resources into building Disneyland, Walt was never afraid to bet everything on his belief that what he was doing would work. This willingness to take risks is something that not only defined his career, but also laid the groundwork for how the Disney company operates even today. As Walt Disney grew older, his vision expanded beyond just animation and movies. He began looking at how he could improve communities and cities. This led to one of his most ambitious and visionary projects, the experimental prototype community of tomorrow, better known as Epcot. Walt's original idea for Epcot wasn't just a theme park but a fully functioning city where people would live, work and interact using the latest technologies. He wanted it to be a blueprint for the future, a place where innovation and creativity would solve real-world problems. Sadly, Walt passed away before he could see this dream become a reality, and Epcot was eventually transformed into a theme park that only loosely followed his original vision. However, even in its modified form, Epcot remains a testament to Walt's boundless imagination and desire to create a better world. After his death, the Disney organization faced numerous challenges. 
Walt had always been the driving creative force behind the company, and his absence left a void that was difficult to fill. The company initially struggled with maintaining the same level of innovation and creativity. The next two decades saw a mixture of successes and failures, as Disney navigated this period of uncertainty. During this time, there were leadership changes, and the company even faced the possibility of a hostile takeover in the 1980s. However, the appointment of Michael Eisner as CEO in 1984 brought new life to the company. Eisner, along with Frank Wells and Jeffrey Katzenberg, revitalized Disney by focusing on animation, live-action films, and expanding the brand into new markets. Let's circle back to some of the iconic movies and characters that have defined generations. We can't talk about Disney without mentioning The Sound of Music. While not an animated film, The Sound of Music was a significant project distributed by Disney. The film, starring Julie Andrews and Christopher Plummer, became one of the highest-grossing films of all time, and remains a staple in American cinema. Also there's the mix of animation and live action that Disney often explored, such as in Mary Poppins. My favorite, DuckTales paved the way for other beloved series like Chip and Dale, Rescue Rangers, Darkwing Duck, and Tailspin. These shows defined my generation and were instrumental in shaping the Disney Channel's early success, with behind-the-scenes looks, and even upcoming projects. The Disney Channel and the wonderful world of Disney was more than just a show, they were a gateway into a world of wonder. The early days of the Disney Channel were filled with classic Disney cartoons, behind-the-scenes looks at Disney parks and films, and original programming that brought Disney's legacy into our living rooms. And, of course, there are the Mickey, Donald, and Goofy movies that have been a staple of Disney's lineup. Whether it was The Three Mouseketeers or a Goofy movie, these films were full of heart, humor, and memorable moments. Goofy, in particular, became a standout character for many fans, thanks to his endearing mix of clumsiness and sincerity. The influence of Disney also extended to live-action movies and even TV shows. Films like The Parent Trap, Freaky Friday, and Old Yeller. I won't even talk about Old Yeller, I'll Cry. These remain timeless classics that continue to be enjoyed by generations. These films highlighted Disney's knack for creating heartfelt stories that resonated with both children and adults alike. The studio's ability to balance humor, emotion, and family values was key to their success, and it is something that has been emulated by many other studios over the years. Walt Disney was more than just an animator or a businessman, he was a storyteller with a grand vision of how entertainment could inspire, educate, and uplift. His understanding of how to integrate different media to build a cohesive brand was revolutionary at the time. One of the more underappreciated aspects of Disney's legacy is his contribution to education and science. Walt was a firm believer in the power of technology and innovation. His series Tomorrowland was a forward-looking project that showcased cutting-edge scientific developments and imagined the future of society. Shows like Man in Space and Our Friend the Atom were groundbreaking in their attempt to make complex scientific concepts accessible to a young audience. They were ahead of their time, blending education with entertainment in a way that laid the foundation for the edutainment genre. Another, significant, yet often overlooked, area of Walt Disney's work is his involvement in the 1964 New York World's Fair. It was there that some of Disney's most iconic attractions were first introduced. The It's a Small World ride, originally created for the fair, is now a beloved staple of Disneyland and other Disney parks around the world. The attraction's simple yet powerful message of unity and global harmony is one of the enduring philosophies of Disney. Other attractions, like the Carousel of Progress and Great Moments with Mr. F Lincoln also made their debut at the fair, showcasing Disney's commitment to blending storytelling with innovation, as we dive deeper into Disney's filmography, it's impossible not to mention the company's animation milestones. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was not just a commercial success, it was a cinematic revolution. Before this film, no one believed that audiences would sit through a feature-length animated movie. Yet Disney proved the naysayers wrong, creating a film that was both critically acclaimed and commercially successful. The legacy of Snow White set the standard for all animated films that followed, laying the groundwork for future classics like Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and The Jungle Book, which has one of my favorite songs of all time, Bare Necessities. Walt Disney's fascination with trains is another unique aspect of his life that influenced many of his decisions, both personally and professionally. Walt was a lifelong train enthusiast, even going so far as to build a miniature railroad in his backyard, the Carrollwood Pacific Railroad. His love of trains is evident in the design of Disneyland, where the Disneyland Railroad became one of the park's signature attractions. Walt saw trains as a symbol of progress and adventure, concepts that align closely with the spirit of Disney storytelling. Let's not forget the role music has played in Disney's success. The soundtracks of Disney films are legendary, with songs like When You Wish Upon a Star, A Whole New World, and Let It Go becoming timeless anthems. Disney's ability to create songs that are both emotionally impactful and catchy has been a significant part of its storytelling magic. Composers like Alan Menken, the Sherman Brothers, and Elton John have contributed to some of the most iconic soundtracks in movie history.
Music has always been a critical component of Disney's brand, enhancing the emotional depth of its stories and leaving a lasting impression on audiences. Walt Disney was a dreamer and a doer, someone who believed in pushing the boundaries of what was possible. Whether through his films, television shows, theme parks, or even his vision for a better society, Disney's influence is immeasurable. His journey from a small-town boy with big dreams to a global cultural icon is a testament to the power of creativity, innovation, and relentless determination. Walt Disney's impact on American culture and the world at large is nothing short of revolutionary. Beyond the realms of film and theme parks, he shaped the broader entertainment industry and influenced how companies approach branding and marketing. Disney understood early on that characters and stories had value beyond their initial appearances. This led to the pioneering of the idea of cross-platform storytelling, what we now call franchises. For instance, Mickey Mouse didn't just exist as a cartoon character, he became the face of an entire brand. Merchandise featuring Mickey, from toys to clothing, became as integral to Disney's success as the films themselves. Disney was one of the first to realize the importance of building a cohesive brand across different media. The success of Mickey Mouse, and later other characters like Donald Duck, Goofy and Pluto, illustrated how animation could extend beyond the screen and into every aspect of daily life. Disney also revolutionized the concept of sequels and spin-offs, although sequels were rare in his time. Disney's approach to expanding his universe through recurring characters and consistent thematic content was a precursor to the franchise model we see dominating today's media landscape. The enduring popularity of characters like Mickey, Minnie, and Donald shows the lasting power of building a recognizable and beloved brand. An interesting fact that isn't widely known is Walt Disney's role in the development of audio animatronics. His drive to bring stories to life didn't stop with film, it extended into the realm of physical spaces. Disney's vision for Disneyland required technology that could create lifelike characters and environments. The development of audio animatronics allowed Disney to bring figures like Abraham Lincoln, pirates, and even tiki birds to life with stunning realism. This innovation has since become a staple in theme parks worldwide, used in everything from dark rides to stage shows. As you look deeper into Walt Disney's legacy, it's impossible not to discuss his influence on animation education. Disney didn't just create a new art form, he built a system that could sustain and advance it. The Disney Studio became a breeding ground for some of the most talented animators in history. Programs like the Disney Studio Training Program taught the Disney way of animation, emphasizing principles like squash and stretch, timing and anticipation. These principles became industry standards and are still taught in animation schools around the world. Furthermore, Disney's dedication to preserving and advancing animation is also evident in his role in establishing the California Institute of the Arts CalArts. The school has produced many of the world's leading animators, directors, and artists, and its influence is seen across both animation and live-action film. Graduates of CalArts include legends like Tim Burton, John Lasseter, and Brad Bird, all of whom have contributed significantly to the evolution of animation and storytelling. In addition to his animation and entertainment empire, Walt Disney was a man of significant civic vision. His concept of Epcot, originally envisioned as an experimental prototype community of tomorrow, was an ambitious plan to create a utopian city that would showcase the possibilities of future living. Although the project didn't come to fruition as he originally intended, it speaks volumes about Disney's desire to innovate beyond the screen. The Epcot theme park we know today is a tribute to his vision of a world where technology, culture and creativity intersect. Walt Disney's personal philosophies also played a big role in shaping his work and legacy. He was a firm believer in the importance of family values, hard work and perseverance. These themes run throughout Disney's stories, from the struggles of Cinderella to the determination of Simba in The Lion King. His belief in the transformative power of optimism and the potential of the human spirit is a recurring message that resonates with audiences across generations. Let's also acknowledge the challenges Walt Disney faced. His path to success was far from smooth. Early in his career Disney faced multiple business failures, including the loss of the rights to his first popular character, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. But rather than be defeated, he used that setback as motivation to create something even better, Mickey Mouse. This resilience and determination are central to understanding Disney's journey. He viewed obstacles not as dead ends but as opportunities for reinvention and growth. Disney's impact is also evident in the way his company has continued to evolve after his passing. The modern Disney empire, with its acquisitions of Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilm, and 20th Century Fox, embodies the same spirit of innovation and storytelling that Walt championed. The way Disney's legacy has been adapted to fit the needs of contemporary audiences while staying true to the original vision is a testament to his foresight. What if, like a popular Disney Plus title, Walter Ellis Disney never existed, from the early days of hand-drawn animation to today's digital spectacles? Walt Disney's contributions have been the foundation of the entertainment industry's evolution. 
His influence on how stories are told, how characters are developed, and how worlds are built has permeated every corner of popular culture, and influenced everyone from Steven Spielberg to Ye. Walt Disney's interest in animation began when he was a young boy. The magic of animation first captured his imagination through simple flipbooks. Just like me, for a young Walt, this discovery was nothing short of mesmerizing. The idea that drawings could come to life through motion fascinated him, and it was that spark of creativity that would ultimately fuel his journey into the world of animation. Disney's fascination grew as he learned more about how animation worked. The idea of creating entire worlds, characters and stories through drawing was pure magic in his eyes. It was this passion that led him to dive deeper into the work of pioneers in the field, and eventually to the figure who became one of his earliest inspirations, Windsor McKay, the creator of Gertie the Dinosaur. McKay's work was groundbreaking, and it showed Walt what animation could become, a small but telling glimpse into the young dreamer's character. A mix of curiosity, stubborn determination, and a willingness to take risks, all qualities that would later define his career. Disney's early interest in creating his own animated works took root in those formative years, leading him to explore various forms of media as he grew older. He eventually began experimenting with drawing and creating his own simple animations. These early experiments laid the foundation for what would become his lifelong passion. Walt Disney's love for storytelling didn't stop at animation. As a young adult he was also drawn to the world of film and comics. He found inspiration in the works of comic strip artists like E.C. Seger, creator of Popeye, and George Harriman, known for Crazy Cat. These comics demonstrated how art and humor could combine to create engaging narratives. And they influenced Disney's approach to character design and storytelling. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Interesting People here on Quaver Television. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the life and legacy of Walt Disney be sure to check out my other series, This Is Genius, where I break down some of the most iconic moments in hip-hop history. You can also visit my website, at Quaver that is Q, U, A, V, as in Victoria, E, R, television.weebly.com, where you'll find everything you could ever want from Quaver TV, including access to the store, the hip-hop saga mall, and the theater. Stay curious, keep learning, keep grinding, keep growing, and I'll catch y'all next time.